everyone. You are listening to the Swedenborgian Community Online's evening service uh, this Sunday, November 18th. We are uh, quite happy to have you here today in our affirming, uh, uplifting interfaith community. Uh, you may know something about us, but if you don't, uh, we are many people connected uh, throughout the world hoping to uplift each other in spiritual, emotional, physical health, uh, uplift each other in our connectedness uh, with being and uh, each other. Essentially, we are seeking through a plurality of approaches uh, to increase the divinity in heaven within and around us uh, and in society. So, welcome here today. Our service today is entitled A Newer Church by Reverend Dr. George Dole. Uh, he is an amazing individual. Uh, you may know something about Reverend Dr. George Dole. He uh, has translated many of the Swedenborg books that you can find on our website for free, swedenborgiancommunity.org slash explore. Uh, and he's, he's in his uh, 80s now. He but he, uh, he has a renewal of spirit lately because he's gotten new cochlear implants. So it's nice to hear that news from him and, and uh, him being able to communicate a little bit more. So we sing uh, praises for that. And I also sing praises for uh, all of you connected with us this evening and those of you in the chat. See, greetings, folks. It sounds like some of you are getting snow and uh, working and kind of starting new uh, a phase at your work, Albert. That's interesting to hear, and uh, good luck with that, especially in the cold. Maybe it's a new site because of all the snow, if that's what you meant. Uh, that makes sense. Uh, so, yeah, thank you for being connected. All of you can connect with us live during our services on our Chatsy site at swedenborgencommunity.org slash discuss. And you can also call in if you get tired of hearing this voice and would like to share your own, which I uh, entirely invite you to, at 646-564-9571. And with that, let us take a moment to take a deep breath, moving something on our bodies intentionally, perhaps our hands, opening up to divinity, the Lord, the Lady, within and above us. Let us open our scriptures on our cyber altar, as is our tradition, representing divinity, wisdom speaking us from within our traditions, within our life experience and our uh, knowledge, hoping to uplift us from a deep place of love and care toward renewal, a renewal of our spirits, of our individual churches, and the wider church, which uh, is society, not just Swedenborgian or Methodist or Muslim, but uh, all of us are considered a church in our mindset, in Emanuel Swedenborg's mindset, the unintentional namesake of our commu community. Uh, let us also light our candle on our cyber altar, representing how the Lady gives us light, wisdom, insight, and heat, love, warmth, and goodness, and connection. Let us also look at our scripture today, if you happen to have it. We have a corresponding multimedia message which each with each of these uh, evening services. And uh, I thought today was, was pretty insightful for us um, coming into this uh, new phase of existence as we always are, but especially given all the turmoil in the world and, um, you know, the the decrepitness of many of our institutions, political, maybe even churches and otherwise, I think looking at renewal 
and rebirth is really important. Uh, and our scripture today, uh, one of them is from Isaiah 42. And I think Isaiah uh, speaks to me very deeply every time I read it. So hopefully you enjoy this. At one moment during this reading, I'll start to sing. And I actually invite you to uh, mimic, echo, create your own harmony, uh, tap your leg, whatever. Try to make a noise with me if you're, if you're willing. But first reading, this is what God the Lord says. The creator of the heavens, who stretches them out, who spreads out the earth with all that springs from it, who gives breath to its people, and life to those who walk on it. I, the lady, have called you in righteousness. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and make will make you to be a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles, to open eyes that are blind, to free captives from prison, and to release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. I will not yield my glory to another or my praise to idols. See, the former things have taken place and new things I declare. Before they spring into being, I announce them to you. So, sing, sing to the Lord a new song, a new song. His praise, His praise from the ends, the ends of the earth. The earth, you who go down to the sea, and all that is in it, you islands, and all who live in them. Let the wilderness and its towns raise their voices. Let the settlements where Kedar lives rejoice. Let the hot people of Salah Sing for joy. Let them shout from the mountain tops. Let them give glory to the Lamb and proclaim. His praise in the island. Thank you for joining with me in this. Thank God for his wisdom, her insight in the scripture. Often we do feel like we're in islands. And I think it's beautiful that scripture acknowledges that and invites us to uh, sing a song, encouraging others to sing a song, <laughs> encouraging others to make a joyful noise, to be connected with what's around them. I even uh, uh, think it's amazing that there's such an insightful piece in this reading about letting those who are captive free, freeing those from prison, from the dungeons, who sit in darkness. And I think we should take that in many different ways uh, as a call for our own renewal and for the renewal of society and those around us. So many people are sitting in darkness. We sit in our own type of darkness of mystery, perhaps. Maybe we don't know what's going on uh, in, our, in ourselves, as uh, I know I don't <laughs> most of the time. Uh, mystery of 
maybe insights of scripture, of religion, maybe you're, you're trying to find your way. Maybe it's darkness in the prison of being in destructive habits and needing renewal in that way. Perhaps it's really the fact that you're stuck in a dungeon or a prison. And I think with each of these situations, our hearts reach out to us, to you all, to each other. God calls us to open our hearts to these people, to strive to let them go free. I think often it's, it's really sad in this society, in most of the world, uh, perhaps, that our prison systems are as destructive and evil as they are, and not about rehabilitation at all, not about a newer church, a heavenly descending uh, New Jerusalem, as we see in our other reading, promising comfort and love and uh, connection with each other. Instead, our prisons tend to propagate crime, and they're not supposed to. Uh, it can be scary, the, the threat of prison. I'm sure that keeps some of us from doing things. But the system itself is not one of rehabilitation and renewal, and I think we are called to renew it for that uh, purpose. At least for the most part, it's not, um, as I'm sure most of you know. So we are lifting our voices to the universe, to divinity, to each other, to be serious about this change within and without, and to do things about it. I want to take a moment with that to connect with those of you in the chat, see what's going on today. How are you all? Have you... Uh, Received a message this week, perhaps, from life, from, from God through living, uh, for uh, your own insight, for your own living that has been motivational. I know many of you in the chat, see, as I'm looking, are uh, quite uh, the, the wise sharers. Uh, I, I feel like I get most of my real insight from you when, when you share. So please, uh, is there something that the Lord has asked you to do this week that's new. I know many of you are working on your ability to reflect, to, to have gratitude, uh, even in the face of a lot of trial. I, I find your walks to be very inspirational uh, and, and wise and loving. Uh, is there a new element to that? How's that going? I'm, I'm curious to, to see. I'm glad you all can hear me. Uh, <laughs> you're catching up on the, the reading. Yes, if you haven't caught it, I know I'm, I'm sure I've said it. The reading today is at SwedenborgianCommunity.org, and, and please connect with it. And with that, I think that's a sign that we should get, get to it, right? So Reverend George Dole opens up by quoting Secrets of Heaven. And Secrets of Heaven is a book by Swedenborg, his first uh, theological work published anonymously in his 50s. And it says, when life makes the church, and not doctrine separated from life, the church is one. But when doctrine makes the church, there are many. So what could that mean, do you think? I think, for me, it's, maybe it's, it's obvious, you know, when we're stuck in our dogmatic ways, we tend to separate and think of uh, each other as different communities as different entities in a, in a real uh, often hurtful way where we set ourselves against others you know only our religion's right your religion's wrong type of thing and at least according to Swedenborg and I think maybe your heart that's not the way to go it's not healthy it's not from divinity to say okay well I found my book the other day, you know, or when I was born, what have you, and it's the only right one. And if you don't accept this, you're, you're going to burn, you're going to hurt. And I think that's insane, right? <laughs> you know, we all go through trial and pain, and, and often it's of our own making, our own uh, selfish uh, ways, our tendency to do things out of our love of domination. And I think that quite literal hell is the definition of hell even spiritually is you know it starts in our hearts no matter our religion it's really about whether or not we love goodness love love 
I mean, that, that may be a hard word to define often, but I think we're called to try to. I think some things are really apparent about those words, which is, you know, they're, they're words describing how we uplift other people, how we connect to other people and do things in this world for the benefit of multiple uh, parties, of the whole community, the bigger the better, especially when we're supporting their good habits and their ability to uplift people. Uh, there was a practice that uh, my partner Alyssa uplifted in our interview with her, which is a movement practice that I tried to uh, emulate a little bit earlier. And I think uplifting practices, uplifting your work, you know, maybe you're uh, a scientist, a builder, uh, someone who uh, researches certain topics, I think that really can serve uh, the wider public in, in so many amazing ways. And I encourage you to find how inspirational and, and divine it is at its source, at its, at, at its motivational quality, why it's important in this world, and, and open ourselves to um, continuing to love those motivations more and more for renewal. So Reverend George Dole goes on uh, from this quote, and he, he describes how the Swedenborgian churches in North America have, in their history, um, ignored that quote to a large degree. That often the churches are separated and uh, disconnected due to doctrine. And really what he focuses on in this sermon is there are those who call themselves Swedenborgian, and then those who have read Swedenborg and been really inspired and maybe even written about it, but wouldn't call themselves that. And often we define... Uh, ourselves based on these labels, of course, and then we create distance because other people aren't accepting those labels are similar. But I think in our tradition especially, some of the, the most inspirational uh, names, uh, you know, uh, of people of fame that have been influenced by Swedenborg, they never necessarily called themselves Swedenborgian. They might have written a book about relating to Swedenborg, but they, they weren't necessarily in a community and, and saying everyone else uh, is wrong or doesn't belong. And so he lists some of those names. So um, I'm sure you, you know, you've heard of some of these. Uh, William Blake, uh, Dostoevsky, Balzac, Goethe, Young, and Emerson. These are not just names we pull out of the ether to, to, to pretend like uh, Swedenborgian thought has some uh, ability to, to inspire people. But these are real historical figures who have made huge impacts in, in their work and, and their lives, inspired by Swedenborg. And I think that's for good reason. I think whatever we call religion that opens its door to other people and supports them, looks for the metaphor of creation and the, the deep resonance um, and place that the universe and God tries to inspire and speak to us from, that's a really uh, inspirational, really enlivening, uh, passion, you know, passionate and exciting idea, religion, tradition, culture, whatever you want to call it, something that breaks down barriers, opens doors, and calls for renewal uh, is really uh, powerful. And I think it's another word for Holy Spirit, God with us. And some of us call our version of that Swedenborgian. <laughs> And he goes on and he explores how a lot of people who call themselves Swedenborgian take this phrase, the new church from Revelation, uh, which is the last book of the Christian Bible, and uses that phrase to describe themselves as Swedenborg does in a way to say the new church, this new entity coming into being in life and in, in this world is going to break these barriers down as they're going to look at things more uh, as parable, like Christ spoke in, um, and, and other things. Not that each person within it or around it is going to do each of those things, but in general, there's going to be a new age of religiosity that isn't about these barriers and rejecting people. And it's beautiful how it fits with the description of the New Jerusalem coming down in Revelation, because that new, that city that many Christians point to as, you know, the future reality of, of life on this planet uh, is this really 
interesting thing, you know, it, it's made out of jasper stone, there's, there's, or shining like jasper stones, there's pearls for gates, uh, it's a cube, uh, it has gates on all sides, it flies, all these things. Uh, and we've talked about the city before, but one of the things I love about this description that I'll reiterate is how there are gates on each side and all people are called to join there. And I think it's a real description of diversity, of a community coming together with shared purpose of love and goodness and all our myriad of cultures and traditions and uh, bringing us together and uplifting uh, real wisdom and health and connection so that we can, uh, you know, free the prisoners out of the dungeons and, and uh, uplift the, the poor, the, the starving, uh, the oppressed, which is really the, the deep message of Christ and scripture, biblical scripture, Hebrew scripture, and, and many others, in my point of view. And Reverend George Dole uplifts how using this phrase, the new church for ourselves, is just like all the other approaches to limiting religion that have come before uh, Emanuel Swedenborg publishes his books and eventually churches and other organizations start forming an inspiration from those books. Uh, and so he's, he's calling Swedenborgians out. <laughs> and he's also saying it's time for renewal in the Swedenborgian church. Uh, Swedenborg says that uh, as kind of a general, it's time for renewal of all churches and all peoples. And George Dole is taking that and saying, we really have to look at Swedenborgianism and what we've been doing and try to accept the fact that we're being called to something new. And so he, he describes how often Swedenborgian churches have the trappings of, of other types of churches and not, and he doesn't say it's wrong. He's just saying we have to be willing to look at the things in our lives, communities, churches, etc., and be willing to say, okay, I'm doing this for tradition's sake or because I, I have a habit and it may not be serving me. And so ultimately he's looking at these things in our church, in our personhoods, and wants us to be willing to look at them also and say, this isn't working. And, and let's change. And he says the, uh, the initial steps of creating any type of institution is, of course, coming up with some description of what it is, what it's about. And often that's true for us, too. We have to have a job, probably. We have to have some type of motivation to do things, uh, some type of calling. But if we're not willing to reflect on it and make changes even after that initial step, you know, essentially saying, well, it's the Constitution, right? So it can never change. We can't add an amendment even, right? We can't, we can't interpret it. Of course, every literal interpretation is an interpretation, but people will tell you, oh, well, my interpretation is the right one and you're just off your rocker, right? And we can't do that with our own lives either. We need to be willing to, to transform and change and move forward. With that initial idea of, of what uh, Reverend George Dole is trying to get to here, I want to connect with you all and, and invite your, your thoughts and ideas. And let me see what you're saying in the, the chats here real quick. Some conservative ministry leaders actually do have wonderful prison ministries these days, as has been done for a long time, Elbert shares. Yes, um, my grandfather, who is a retired Southern Baptist preacher, his uh, one of his first gigs was at a prison. He was a prison minister, and you're right. Uh, it can... There are a lot of ministries, conservative, liberal, and otherwise, especially in the South, so mainly conservative, that connect with prisons and try to uplift people uh, serving hard time and, and bring some uh, hope and some insight uh, to those spaces. And I think that's a great habit um, and, and a beautiful one uh, to the extent it's done healthily and uh, in a positive way. Paige also shares, I find myself fascinated with Swedenborgian history, that two groups formed early on in England, one uh, referencing Close, which uh, Reverend George Stoll, uh, Close is an uh, individual, uh, John Close, I believe, Reverend George Stoll references him in the, the sermon, um, that wished to bring Swedenborg's ideas into the usual Church of England realm, so into the, the churches that existed, and then the other church 
which went out after 30 or so years, Page is saying, and became um, conference, yes, that wanted a separate organization, which they formed similar to the Church of England, since that's what they know, hierarchical, etc. Yeah, I mean, we can't, we often can't help to structure even our new systems, much like the ones around us and what we're used to. I think that makes sense. Uh, it, you know, but often we get like stuck in it. We get, and we, and we also reject everyone else from doing their own way. You know, it'd be interesting. How do you have, maybe you, maybe Pinch, since you've reflected on this and you find it so fascinating, I'm curious what you think about this. How do you have these different approaches to organization and, and be willing to, to say, but we're one. Maybe it's just the fact that we're willing to say it. <laughs> I don't know. Um, you know, because I think there are different approaches to church. There's different approaches to uh, structure and communities, denominations, as we've seen. But often we kind of set ourselves against each other and say, well, you're doing it wrong and you're doing it wrong. And, you know, I can be a culprit in that. I, I have my critiques of the other Swedenborgian denomination. And they don't ordain women or queer folk. I mean, how can I not critique that? But I think maybe like a brother or a sister or a friend, I, I should approach it that way and be willing to say, you know, I don't think what you're doing is the healthiest. Like, I can't force you to change, but I, I do feel called to say that. And I also want to say you are my friend. I want to uplift all the beautiful things about you, which the other denomination has so many amazing things going on as well. And but it's hard. It's hard to look past certain things that we may find to be bigoted and, and hurtful, right? And that, that can be true, too. And sometimes it's healthy to create space. So these are all things we have to reflect on for ourselves and our own situations and our own um, communities and, and lives. Paige also shares, I think passage of this passage of Swedenborg is profound. The one that uh, looks like you're quoting the one that we quoted earlier, yeah. I think it, it is profound. You know, it's interesting that he would say that if you just, if, if we as a people, of all these different religions even, different labels, if we were to just say, you know what, you, that Muslim group, you're really about goodness and love and supporting other people, and us, this Methodist group, we're about the same thing, and, and let's not get caught up in labels, let's look at the message of God and the connection with divinity, and, and, and realize that we're, we're one. I think that's amazing that he's asserting that, that if we're just willing to really focus on life and our motivations, our deep uh, goodness, if we share goodness, right? Like if we share those motivational qualities, then eventually all people are one because then we're uplifting each other and, and we're all on the same page generally about trying to uplift the health of our community and ourselves. And she says, to her, this passage really emphasizes the importance of joining truth and love. Uh, that truth alone is divisive. Yeah, so having deep heart and wisdom. So although we talk a lot about diversity in, in, um, in our messages in, in this community and bringing different people together, I think there are wisdom. there's wisdom in the different communities. So... They may use different words, but there's still truth there and wisdom. And I think it's important, Paige, that you're emphasizing this, that we have to be willing to see wisdom and live it. Because often in that process of reforming our heart and becoming a newer church within and without, not only are we supposed to look at our heart and um, gravitate our, you know, our, our actions and our motivations towards more loving and good qualities, but our wisdom helps lead us there, and our wisdom helps inform it, helps interrogate ourselves, which we often need, to, to really um, help us see if we're on a good path and, and to make that path uh, more and more in uh, connection with divinity and, and love itself. Uh, she also sh says that uh, she's reading about the state of higher education now and how this industry needs to change dramatically and how we have such difficulty because we are only familiar with what we know. Yeah, Paige, you've always inspired me long before I joined this community with your work in education and uh, research around uh, education and, and learning and doing uh, things better in, in groups and communities and leadership and uh, 
um, that doesn't scratch the surface, but uh, yeah, I think that's really an inspirational page that uh, you are leaning into this call for renewal in the education system and to create something that works for kids better. Because honestly, it's not working for kids very well right now um, in a lot of different places and a lot of different situations. And it may work with, for some, but not for others. And I think that's unfortunate. Uh, and uh, my, my partner, Alyssa, works with kids and I hear all the time about, you know, the, the delicacy of approach and and uplifting uh, education in different ways depending on the individual and, and often our system is cookie cutter, right? And um, we're only scratching the surface as well with, with the wisdom and um, our ability to, to educate people uh, in those systems. And I, I think it's, it's really important to, to try to because we're not doing very well in this country in relation to others in, in a lot of different places. And, it's cool though because I've heard um, certain trajectories in our education system here where we're 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 doing more uh, transformation. There are more uh, you know uh, groundbreaking schools, systems, and approaches in this country than there was when I was a kid. That's for sure. And so I say we're not doing well. I think we are doing better, um, and we're called to keep doing more and more. Uh, and and that's that's true for ourselves on a, a personal level as well. So. Connecting back into the sermon from Reverend George Dole, uh, George Dole mentions that customs need to be useful and they need to be reflected upon. And John, who uh, we are quoting from in Revelation, the book of Revelation, John says he sees this vision from a high mountain. And George Dole is relating this high mountain to the deepest heaven. Um, as Swedenborg says, a mountain relates to um, being very close to divinity, being very deep within uh, love and wisdom. Um, this high mountain means that he's in heaven and uh, seeing a message from, from God in the spiritual world. And actually John says in Revelation, I was in the spirit. So we're not just reading into this from a Swedenborgian context. And he sees a lot of trippy things, right? He sees this ascending city. He sees these crazy uh, beings and uh, what some would call monsters, dragons, and uh, George Dole refers to an evangelical Christian and they're relating how these descriptions must be metaphors, right? And so uplifting those metaphors, Reverend George Dole uh, points to how the city is, is an image of bringing people together and connection. And then he quotes from Heaven and Hell, um, in relation to how this connection uh, uplifts people in the next life in this diverse place called heaven. And this is from Swedenborg. It says, We may gather the magnitude of heaven's pleasure simply from the fact that for everyone there, it is delightful to share their pleasure and bliss with someone else. And since everyone in the heavens is like this, we can see how immense heaven's pleasure is. This kind of sharing flows from the two loves of heaven, love for the Lord and love for our neighbor. These loves by nature want to share their pleasures. The reason love for the Lord is like this is that the Lord's own love is a love of sharing everything it has with everyone. It intends the happiness of everyone. Much the same love exists in individuals who love him because the lady is in them. And I think that's such an inspirational idea that God's love is one that hopes to share, strives to share its happiness, its joy and love with everyone else, uh, no matter who they are, where they are in the universe. And that's the, a, a main um, principle, a main mode of being for God. And in fact, Swedenborg goes on to say that's why God created the universe, because God wanted to give joy and, and love and support to other beings, not just within him or herself. Uh, and I think that's, that's uh, amazing. And so really that um, quote that George Dole uplifts is a call to love others and to share with them, a hope to uplift them uh, and, and renew them in a sense, right? Because uplifting someone out of a terrible situation, uplifting ourselves, that's renewal and, and that's change. 
And George emphasizes that we are each capable of this. We are all capable of this. And we are called to this. And we're capable of it because we have not only our loves modeled after God and um, receiving from God, but our strength, our ability to uh, connect, to be motivated to do things comes from divinity, from an infinite source of uh, ability and, and power. And we should receive it that way and, and use it that way. With that, I want to take a moment to just reflect on George's insight, what he hopes to share with us, a call to renewal and love, <sighs> of receiving that capability and living it from divinity. Seeing other people not as strangers to be shunned, but as the sacred, no matter their label and tradition. Seeing the good in them, even if much of what they present is atrocious or scary, not our cup of tea. Trying to uplift the good, being open to redefining the good, and uplift them in those good habits and ourselves as well, moving away from our destructive intentions and modalities and moving the obstacles from divinity's path to our heart to bring graciousness, gratitude, love, insight, and care. And as we continue in a prayerful attitude, I'll play some music from uh, Ken Turley called Winter Sweet, his third movement. Uh, Ken Turley is a Swedenborgian minister and out of Maine, I believe. And he makes, him and his wife make some beautiful music. And I'll turn to the chat see for uh, your prayers.
O oh, Divine One, help us to receive your renewal. Help us to create space for others to receive it, to uplift as Page uplifts Richard's War, Richard War's idea that without dignity and safety, it is almost impossible to change and to be transformed without love and support. So help us to uplift that in others with and for others, for ourselves, knowing that you very deeply love us. We are in your providential stream, despite the evil and destructiveness in this world, we know we are in your hands. Help us to accept your providence, your work, even in our state of freedom, to be harmful. Help us to live forth your loving kindness and goodness in our motivations and in our lives for our renewal, for others, for society, the church on each and every level. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you all for joining us this evening or whenever you caught us. Uh, we hope to connect with you further. So again, uh, head to our website, SwedenborgianCommunity.org, or our YouTube channel, uh, Swedenborgian Community Online. Uh, also, many other uh, podcasting apps. You can find our podcast. Um, and connect with us. Reach out. Call in sometime. Uh, join our chat, see, email us, whatever. We want to hear from you. We uh, love hearing uh, the voices of those in this community uh, hoping and willing to uplift each other where we're at. Uh, so go forth in renewal and change, knowing that you are quite loved and are called to enliven and embody higher and higher love. Amen. <laughs>